Yes, Lord, hear our prayer. God, we come before you this morning. And Father, we pray that you might speak to our hearts and to our minds. May you open us to understanding. Lord, may we be willing to hear from you this morning. And Father, may you use me to speak your word clearly and effectively. May I communicate your message this morning, Father, that you desire. Father, we give ourselves to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. His mighty name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Oh, you can do better than that. Good morning. And you at home, good morning to you as well. And we're so glad that you're with us. We're glad everyone's here this morning. I think we got a full house this morning. It's really good for what we can do this morning. So it's really awesome um, what God is doing in our midst this morning. I don't know about you, but this year has been unbelievable, hasn't it? I mean, it's been a very difficult year. And, and I've been thinking about that the last few weeks. And, and this message really comes out of, of that thought process and it's really been difficult because of all the division that we've seen this year. Anybody agree with me? Come on. I need your help this morning. There's been so much division. There's been division because of the pandemic, right? I mean, we've got people that are, are how, do, how do we say this? We got extremes with the pandemic. Am I right? Come on, I need your help. Am I right? Yes. We've got extremes with the pandemic. We've got those that, 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 well, let me just put it to you. We've got maskers and anti-maskers. We've got people uh, far left, far right thinking about it. And then we come down and we've got, we've got division. We have saw that division with race this year, right? That there's still injustice that takes place. And we've got that racism that is causing division. And then the election thrown into all that. And our entire country is divided just about down the middle. Am I right? Yes. Division. And this morning I want to talk about that. And, I, and the, it comes from a phrase from our Pledge of Allegiance. And I just want to use three words out of that that says, under God, indivisible. And I think this message is straight from Jesus. Because first off, we are as a body of Jesus Christ, as a body of Christ. And what is the body of Christ? It's the church. This gathering together of us. We've been, you know, we've been talking about the church. And I'm taking kind of, uh, kind of a break, but also this kind of goes right along with the idea of what church is. That church is a movement around a message that happened because of a particular event, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so I want us to think this morning, I want you to think about Jesus and and. And, and I want you to think about his married men. Well, that's the wrong story, isn't it? But I want you to think about Jesus and who he picked to be his disciples. The first four. The first four that Jesus went to and he picked were who? They were, what, what, did, what was their occupation? They were what? Fishermen. Yeah, all four of them were connected to the fish industry. They were hardworking. They were middle class. They were, they were working class individuals. And so Jesus began with these four individuals. And then what happened? And then it gets a little interesting. Because then he begins to pull the diversity in, and it shows us what the church should be like. And he pulls in a guy named Matthew. You know who Matthew was, what Matthew did? See, he was a traitor to his own people, and he began working for the government that was in charge, and he was extorting money from his people, the Jews, to make himself rich. That's Matthew. And then you've got a zealot that was there 
Now, what in the world is a zealot? Well, I think we would probably call them a terrorist today because they were willing to do whatever it took to overthrow the government. So you got a government employee, and then you what? You got a, uh, uh, an anarchist, someone who was willing to, to kill, steal, do whatever it took. And Jesus puts these people together. And then he chooses others that are so diverse. And he brings them together. And that's the picture of the church that we get. Our church, we have worked so hard at this, is that we have tried to be united around one message. And so this morning, I'm talking about what Jesus' heart was about. And one of his most famous prayers in John chapter 17 is that he talked about, and that is unity. Unity. Look what he says here in John 17. He says, he says, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. So who is that? Who is he talking about? He's, he's praying, God, I'm going to pray for those who's going to believe in me through their message. He's talking about the disciples' message. So who is he talking about here? Us. He's talking about us. That all of them, read this with me, that all of them may be one. He wants us all to be one. So that they may be brought to complete what? Say that word, unity. Unity. And then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So Jesus' concern was unity. I mean, Jesus... I want you to hear this from my heart and from Jesus' heart, really from Jesus' heart. It doesn't matter whether you feel it from my heart. But I want you to know it from Jesus' heart. Jesus hates division. He hates division. And he does not want division in the church. What is it that is going to show the world the difference that Jesus makes in our life. What is it that makes that difference? It is this right here. That we love each other. You remember that verse that Jesus said? And this is how the world will know that you are my followers. If you have love for one another. You know, I've turned Facebook off. I, I just, I couldn't take, 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 I got fed up with it this week. You know why? Because I saw brothers and sisters of faith at each other. And I couldn't take it anymore. That breaks Jesus' heart. How are we going to reach the world for Jesus? How are we going to spread the movement of Christ if we're, we allow what separates the world to come into the church. We can't. I'm not saying that we are not concerned about issues. We can be concerned about issues. But here's the deal. I hope that you don't know how I voted. Do you know that? I really do. I hope that you cannot tell who I voted for because then I'm a success. You know why? Because my greatest concern is that you know Jesus Christ, not what political party that I'm a part of or not a part of because the political party will not will not change your life has it changed your life it can affect I don't know about you but I never started a war anybody ever started a world the government started wars but we didn't start wars I'd like for you all to read Romans 13 this week. Romans chapter 13, 1 through 8. Read that this week. I was going to read that this morning, but I felt like that God was telling me to, to focus on this and not to, not to get my, myself in the picture. I want you to read it for yourself and see what it says about. You know what? It doesn't matter what political party won this week. Our God 
is still in control. Do you believe that? It doesn't matter who won or who lost this week because our God is still in control. He's the one who's got the world. And in Romans 13, he is the one who establishes the government. And God is able to use... He is able to use whoever is in power at that time. If you read through the Bible, you will see over and over again that God is able to use whoever is there to bring about the change that he seems necessary. God is in control. And so our trust cannot be in man, but our trust has got to be in Jesus Christ and God. So how do we unite when we're so different? Here's how we do it. Number one. We realize that we desperately need each other. We desperately need each other. Look what the Bible says in Romans 12. It says, just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. Do you get that? We all belong to each other. So no matter what your giftedness is, Guess what? We need you. We need you. We need your giftedness and what God has put in your life to build the body of Christ. That's why God would bring together such a diverse group of men, at the, in the disciples, the men and women that he brought. He brought them all and they were so diverse. And yet God used them to change and transform the entire world. The entire world. You know, as a church, so often we look at other churches as our enemies, don't we? That they're in, we're in competition with them. They're not our enemy. A style of worship may be different than our style of worship. That, that's not cause for us being enemies whether we're 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 uh, baptist or presbyterian or methodist or assembly of god or church of christ or or whatever they are not our enemies you know what else those of a different party political party are not our enemies even those of a different faith are not our enemies. Boy, it's gotten quiet in here. We have one enemy, and his name is Satan, and his entire goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy our lives. He wants to destroy churches who are lifting up the message of Jesus Christ. And he wants to destroy them through division in any way that he can. And so it is important for us to love each other. Man, that is, I don't know anybody that has ever changed politically or spiritually through argument. Do you change when someone's arguing with you? Man, I don't. I get my back up. Anybody, you know what that means? I get my back up. I'm back up against the wall if somebody's arguing, you know? It's like, come on, come on, I'm ready. No, you know what, cha you know what changed my heart and my life? It was love. Man, it was love. That's what transformed me. Someone cared enough about me to tell me about Jesus that I could be forgiven, that I could find hope, that I could find true love through a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is what changed my heart and my life. And the enemy seeks to destroy us. And he seeks to bring in to, in, into our, our family here. Division. And we got to fight against it. Why? Because we need each other. We don't need a whole church full of, of Sam's. You know that? We don't, because we'd be running here and there and everywhere. We'd be so, you know what? We, we, need, we need everybody that we got. 
And if you're here this morning and you're a follower of Jesus Christ, God wants you using what he's gifted you to do, to do, whether it's using your hands, whether it's using your mind, or like me, whether it's using your mouth. Whatever it is, God wants to use you, and he's put us together to do that as the body. We're all different. What if we were all hands, you know? No, he gave us a mouth. He gave us ears. And all these things work in conjunction together. That's what the Bible is saying. So we desperately need each other. And when we realize that we need each other, that breaks down barriers. I need you in my life. You know, through this year, it's been very difficult because I haven't been able to put my eyes on you. Do you know that? It's been so difficult because we've been separated and, and you know, just talking through, through the camera kind of deal and not really able to see you and get feedback. We need each other. We need each other. You know, I love the phrase that says, as one... Uh, uh, um, one man sharpens another. You know, it's, it's kind of like, it, you know, we got to rub up against each other. We got to make the mistakes and we got to do the things and we're rubbing up against each other. And you're helping me get, get further down the road. You're helping me be a better man and I'm helping you be a better man, a better woman. You, you know, we're helping each other become who Jesus wants us to be. We need each other. The second thing is this. As a church, as a body of Christ, we're going to build up, not tear down. Look what Paul says in Acts. Or what it says in Acts. It says, and now I entrust to you, you to God and to the message of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance with all those he has set apart for himself. So God is able to take us where we are and to lift us and to build us up and to make us into who he wants us to be. He wants to build us up. And so often, man, we feel like in order for us to get our point across, we've got to tear the other person down. Man, we see that on Facebook, don't we? And Twitter and all those things. Man, we need to be, as a church, as a people, building others up. Helping them be the best person they can be as they follow Jesus Christ. Lifting up each other. Romans 14, Paul writes, So then let us aim for... Read this with me, okay? So then let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up in the lord so our our role is harmony god wants harmony he wants unity what are what can we be unified around around who jesus is that he's god's son that he came because of his great love for us and he died for me to pay my penalty and your penalty for sin. That's what we can unite around. We can unite around, around the message that not only did he die, but he rose again. He's resurrected. He's alive. And when I give my life to him, when I follow him, he fills my life with such grace and peace and power to live the life that God intended for us to live. So let's be about harmony around those things, unity around those things that God says is, is so important. D.L. Moody, he wrote this. He's a famous preacher, and he wrote this. He said, you may find hundreds of fault finders among professed Christians. Uh-oh. That hurts, doesn't it? But all their, Christ all their criticism will not lead one solitary soul to Christ. What is it that brings people to Christ? Is it criticizing them? Is it cutting them down? No, it's building them up. It's lifting others up. Our country needs what I'm talking about today. Our country needs 
needs Christians, needs followers of Jesus Christ to stand up and say enough is enough and I'm putting Jesus first in my life and I am going to break down the barriers of division and I'm going to love my neighbor as God told me to love my neighbor and I'm going to care for them regardless of whose name of a sign they've got in their front yard. Amen? I'm going to love them. Amen? That's what God wants us to do, is to love. We're going to, number three, we're going to love like Jesus loved. I think we've got to look back. You've got to look back at the Bible and see the type of government that they were under and see what Jesus did with it. You know, what he said about it. What was his concern? You know, the Jews thought that Jesus was coming to overthrow the government. That's what they wanted. And Jesus was like, no, my kingdom from somewhere else. My kingdom is coming here. And Jesus brought his kingdom. And he offers us a part of that kingdom. Our kingdom, my citizenship, I may live in America. And yes, I'm a citizen of America. But my ultimate citizenship, My ultimate citizenship, there we go, is in the kingdom of God. I've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And God wants to do that for each and every one of us. And that's what we've got to look at. We've got to focus on that. That God, we've got to love like Jesus loved. He says, a new command I give you. Read it with me. Love one another. As I've loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Read it with me. If you love one another. I don't know about you, but that's what he's telling us to do. Love one another. And he didn't say, you see, this is what breaks down every argument of division. Every injustice is when we realize that Jesus Christ died for every single individual that was ever born. Jesus died for them. And it is my responsibility to love them and to love them into the kingdom. That's our calling. That's our message. That's Jesus' heart. And it's got to break his heart when he sees us saying things about others that creates division, that tears down others instead of building them up. We can have our values and hold on to special issues that we're concerned about. God pushes, puts issues in our life. But you can do it in a loving way and not tearing another person down. You see, this is the key to us reaching our community. This is the key for us making a difference in our world. You want to change your school that you're at? You want to change your work where you're at? You want to change your community that you live in? You want to change our country? Here is how you change it. By loving our neighbors. First, you've got to fall in love with God, right? Love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then he says, and the second commandment is this, to love each other as you love yourself. <laughs> Man. You know what? I don't care about your political beliefs. I don't care. I, 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 I believe that you should, you should be involved. I believe that you should stand for Christian values. I believe that you should allow the Bible and God's word direct you in what you're concerned about. I do believe that. But I'm going to love you no matter where you fall on a political spectrum. I'm going to love you regardless of where you fall in your lifestyle. I'm going to love you because that's what Jesus did. Right? Woman caught in adultery. Jesus showed her love. 
go sin no more. I don't condemn you either. Where are we with all this? Where are we with our love? Man, I want, I, you know, since we started this church in, in, in 1996, our passion and our desire was to reach our community for Jesus Christ. To share his love with others. And I am proud of our church. I love our church. Our church is diverse. Look around the room. Our church is diverse in so many different ways. And it's awesome. And guess what? As we continue, you guys do a good job at this. As we continue to love each other, you know what? Our, our, our influence just grows in the community. I want to be known as that loving church. Because that's what Jesus said that we should be. We should love one another. So whether a person is a masker or an anti-masker, I'm going to love them. Regardless of that person, if they, they want to be secluded and separated for their health, issues i'm gonna love them whether they're way over here and they don't you know they don't even believe there's a virus i'm gonna love them are you with me whether they are far left or far right politically i'm gonna love them you see the love of jesus christ goes right down the middle and that's where we got to stay, in the love of Jesus. When you're on Facebook, can I just encourage you something? When you're on Facebook or Instagram or on Twitter, would you just ask this question before you post something? Is this loving? Is this loving? All the believers, look what it says here. In Acts chapter 4, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. Generosity, you know, extravagant generosity was taking place. Just like you guys do. Our church is extravagantly generous. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy persons among them. Do you see what unity does? When we're unified around the message of Jesus Christ. Because it is his message that makes the difference. Because Jesus is the one. Let me tell you a little bit about Jesus. And let's unify around this. He's the living son of God who was born without sin, who came to earth full of grace and truth, love and mercy to save sinners. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is the Lord of glory, the great I am, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He's the soon returning, conquering king of kings and Lord of lords. He is the word made flesh, anointed, chosen, son of the most high God. He is the good shepherd, the living vine, the bread of life. He is my refuge and my shield. He is my righteousness. He is the defender of the weak. He's my advocate sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me and for you. He is the way, say it with me, the truth and the life he guards he guides he hears he heals he forgives and he frees he opens blind eyes and he raises the dead he delivers the captives he defends the weak he loves those that religion rejected his love never fails there's nothing you can do to cause him to love you more and there's nothing you can do to make him love you less my jesus is the one that satan couldn't stop 
Death couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't contain him. He is risen from the dead that whoever calls on his name would be saved, forgiven, and transformed and made new. Can we agree? Can we agree that Jesus is Lord? Can we agree? Are you with me? Jesus is Lord? I don't have time for Facebook fights or Twitter wars. Our mission is too important. Our task is too great. Our goal is too big to get into petty disagreements. Our task is to reach the world with the love of Jesus. Are you with me? Let's change this world by loving others into God's kingdom. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I am so grateful that, Lord, you gave us a common mission and a common vision that we could rally around regardless of our background, regardless of any views that we may hold, that we can rally around this mission of Jesus, that he is the answer for the world today. He is the answer for the world tomorrow. He is the answer for the world forever. If we will place our trust and faith into him. God, we come before you this morning and we, we ask for your forgiveness of where we failed you. Where we failed to love others the way you've loved us. And so God, we confess this morning that we need your forgiveness. God, God forgive us for hurting those that we love. Forgive us for saying things that are hurtful, writing things that are hurtful, God. May we today be a new day for us to turn our lives and to focus on loving others the way Jesus loved. We give ourselves to you today, God. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, the steps to finding a relationship with him, the steps to knowing him is just to say, you can say it out loud or in your heart, you can say, Jesus, I believe you're God's son. I believe you died for my sin. I believe that you rose from the dead. And I ask you to forgive me. And I want to live my life following you. If that's your prayer, the Bible says that you are saved. You're brought into relationship with the Father. You're adopted into his family. And we are one together around the mission of Jesus. God, we give ourselves to you today. Use us, God, in our community. Use us at school. Use us at work. Use us at home. Use us in our community, God. Wherever we go, God, would you use us to spread your love? May we be infectious, God. May our love be contagious. And may we spread it around freely. In Jesus' name we pray. If that's your prayer, would you just say amen with me? Amen. Amen. May that be our prayer this week. Make me more loving, God. In your name we pray.